Hi guys! In this video we're going to start building a 3D platformer using the Unity game engine. We'll cover how to install everything you need, and then we'll get familiar with Unity and use it to create a simple scene. You can download this project and the final game we're working towards by supporting us on Patreon. All the links you need can be found in the description. Ok, so the first thing we need to do is install Unity. If you already have it installed then you can skip over this chapter. We'll go to unity.com forward slash download. Then we'll download Unity Hub and install it. When Unity Hub opens it will prompt us to sign in. If you don't have an account then click to create one. Once we're signed in it will prompt us to install a version of Unity. This may show a different version for you, as it will be the latest stable Unity release at the time. We'll proceed and wait for this to install. Once it's finished we'll go to the Installs tab. Then we'll click the cog button and select Add Modules. We'll make sure that Microsoft Visual Studio is checked and then click continue. This will install an editor to help us write the scripts needed for our game. The Visual Studio installer will prompt us to choose the workloads we want to install. We'll scroll down and select Game Development with Unity. Then we'll click Install. Once Visual Studio has finished installing, we'll head back over to Unity Hub. We'll go to the Projects tab and click the New Project button. We want to create a 3D game, so we'll select Universal 3D. Universal 3D projects are for games targeting a wide range of hardware such as mobile, mid-tier PCs and consoles. There's also High Definition 3D, but this is for games targeting higher end hardware. We'll name our project Doozy's Adventure. Then we'll click Create Project. When the project finishes loading, we're presented with a sample scene. A game in Unity is made up of one or more scenes. A scene could be a level in the game or could be the main menu screen. Each scene contains game objects that determine what the player sees and hears, and how they can interact with the scene. The sample scene contains a few essential game objects, such as a camera and a light. We'll add more game objects to this to make a simple level. First of all we'll go to the project panel. In here we'll find a folder that contains the scenes. We'll double click this folder to open it. We'll right click the sample scene and select Rename. We'll name this Level 1. Now we'll start adding some platforms to the level. We'll click the plus button in the hierarchy and select 3D Object Cube. We'll name this Platform. 
We can now see a cube in the scene view. We can use the mouse wheel to zoom in. Or we can double click on the platform in the hierarchy to focus on it. If we look at the inspector on the right hand side, we can see all the components of the cube. Every game object has a transform, which determines its position, rotation and scale. We can change the position in either the X, Y or Z axes, and we can see its position change in the scene. We'll leave these all at zero for now. We can also rotate on each axis. Again we'll set these back to zero. The scale determines how big the object is. We'll set this to three on all axes to make the platform a bit bigger. We'll zoom out so we can see what this looks like. It's worth mentioning that you should generally try to have the same scale on all axes. Using a non-uniform scale can lead to things like physics not behaving as expected. To help with this, we can click this button, which will make sure all the values stay the same. In addition to the transform, we have various other components. There's a mesh filter and renderer which determines what the object looks like. There's also a box collider component, which defines a shape that's used by the physics system to handle collisions. Next, we'll create another identical platform. One way we can do this is to duplicate the existing platform. We'll right click on the platform in the hierarchy and select Duplicate. If we change the position of this, we can see that there are now two platforms. This works, but there's no link between the two. This means that if we want to change something, for example the colour, then we'd have to change each one individually. To link all our platforms together, we're going to create something called a prefab. Let's delete the second platform by selecting it in the hierarchy and pressing the delete key. Then we'll navigate to the assets folder in the project panel. We'll click the plus button and create a new folder. We'll name this prefabs. Then we'll double click the folder to open it. Now we'll drag the platform from the hierarchy into the new folder. This has created a prefab of the platform. If we look in the inspector, we can see the prefab has all the components of the platform. Excluding the transform, any changes made here will then apply to all platforms created with the prefab. To create a second platform from the prefab, we'll drag the prefab into the scene view. We'll set the position of this platform to 5 on the x-axis, 1 on the y-axis and 0 on the z-axis. We'll zoom out so we can see both platforms. Now we have two platforms that share the same prefab. Next we'll give them some colour. To do this we need to create a material. We'll navigate to the assets folder in the project panel. Then we'll click the plus button and create a new folder. We'll name this materials. We'll double click this to open the folder. Then we'll click the plus button and create a new material. We'll name this platform material. We can move this slider to the left to scale the view so that we can read all the text. In the inspector, there are various settings that we can change to affect the appearance of the material. For now, we'll just set the colour by clicking on the base map. You can set this to any colour you like. We'll set it to green. Now we want to assign this material to the platforms. As we want it to apply to all platforms, we need to update the prefab. We'll navigate to the prefabs folder. Then we'll select the platform prefab. In the inspector, we'll find the materials section and expand it. 
Then we'll click on this target icon to find a material. We'll search for the platform material. Then we'll click to assign it. Now both platforms have turned green. Next we'll create an object to represent the player. We'll click the plus button in the hierarchy and select 3D object capsule. We'll name this player. We'll set the position of this to 2.5 on the Y axis to place it on top of the platform. Let's make it look a bit more interesting by changing the colour of the player. We'll navigate to the materials folder. Then we'll click the plus button and add a new material. We'll name this player material. We'll select the base map and this time we'll set it to an orange colour. As we don't have a prefab for the player, we can assign the material directly to the object. To do this, we'll drag the material onto the player in the scene view. Now we have a really basic scene. Let's select the game tab to see how this will look when the game is playing. This is showing the view of the scene from the camera. Let's try moving the camera to get a different view. We'll select the camera in the hierarchy. Then we'll change the position on the Y axis to 5. Now we're viewing the scene from a bit higher up. You can try experimenting with different camera positions and rotations to see how that changes the view. Finally, let's save all our changes by selecting File, Save from the main menu. In the next video in this series, we'll look at how to take input from the keyboard or a gamepad and use it to make the player move around. If you want to be alerted when this one's out, then subscribe and click the bell icon. If you have any questions or feedback on this video, let us know in the comments. A big thank you to all our patrons, we really appreciate you helping to support the channel. If you'd like to help and also get access to the source code, you can find details in the description. Thanks guys!